Hello, welcome back and thank you for joining me today. We've been talking about the obstacles to peace, peace that emanates, flows, if you will, from us naturally, because it is who we are. Yet it encounters several obstacles along the way that we have interposed. We've also been taking a look at these with the visual of a veil across our face. This is an image that A Course in Miracles uses quite a bit, and it's a, the veil across the face of Christ. We have picked up a veil, a very thick veil, mind you, and thrown it over our face so that we cannot see things as they really are. Instead of looking at things as they really are, we're looking at the inside of a dark cloth. And we've forgotten what's beyond that claw. And we mistake the inside of a dark piece of cloth that we've hung right over our face as reality. We think that's reality. Exactly. So what we call spiritual practice is our gradual as needed peeling the veil off. And why have you kept going? Because of the attraction of what's on the other side. Quite simply, love attracts itself. Self with a capital S attracts you. It's who you are. God attracts you because you're one with him. So am I. So is every single living thing. So you've come this far by choice. Your own free election. The message for all of us today is to keep going. The last shred of fabric on the veil appears, most often, to be the blackest, the most frightening. It's the ego's last ultimate line of defense. And we've spoken about how you have gotten here, how you get here, how you keep going, which you're invited to do. And that is through the practice of true forgiveness. As this course teaches it, One of the central ideas of A Course in Miracles is that to give and to receive are one in truth. And they are. Giving and receiving are exactly the same thing. As you give, you receive. Here's something that we don't always think about in the midst of email and work and all of our duties and obligations here in life. We don't often think of this, but we have received tremendous gifts. We have received nothing other than the peace of God, the love of God, tremendous gifts we've already received. They've been given to us. Another thing that we don't often think about that is a central idea of this course as a thought system, which it is a thought system, And that is, every gift that is given 
is received simultaneously at the same time. God's gift of life itself has been received. God's gift of peace has been received. Even if you feel chaotic and stressed today, you have received the peace of God. Here's what we must learn to do. Accept it. Hmm. This is why when we forgive in the world, it may seem like the person or the event that we've forgiven in our mind continues unabated and seems to have the exact same behavior, the exact same things going on on the surface of life, it may look to us as though nothing substantial has actually happened. Well, let's take the example of forgiving someone and let's say they've behaved badly whatever that means to you. You found yourself affected by such behavior, and rather than condemning, blaming, and doing the usual, you replaced those thoughts with the thought of the Holy Spirit with forgiveness, and you forgave. Let's say the other person continues their behavior doesn't seem like they've been impacted at all, yet they have. They have received the gift of forgiveness. There may appear to be a period of time, like a lifetime or more, before that person accepts the gift. The gift is received the instant it's given, whether we're the recipient or the giver, doesn't matter. It's the same. There may be a period of time before the gift is accepted. And what the Holy Spirit reassures us of is that the gifts that we've been given are awaiting our acceptance. When we look out at our brother, in other words, at other people, at the world around us, we often here in the world see fear. We see it because we share in it. So, and this is very powerful, we can choose what it is that we would see. Rather than seeing fear and separation, we could see our brother's loveliness, our perfect oneness, our brother's radiance, happiness and joy. We could choose to see our brother as he really is. And the more you practice true forgiveness, the more you see him, her, them, all of them as they really are. And it's really just one of us. It's very powerful. And as we race about in our stark raving madness in the world, that's actually putting it nicely sometimes when you think about all of the behavior that's going on here. It's, well, I mean, you might find yourself sometimes at a loss for words. That has certainly happened to me. <laughs> Where I looked at someone's behavior and I thought, oh, wow. Here's something that we're invited to see. Everything that we do, I mean, you do, but I do, anyone, anything we do or say or our carriage in life, the vibe that we put out, so to speak, it's either one of two things. 
it's an expression of love, or it is a call for love. A cry for help, in other words. Bad behavior is a cry for help. If your mind goes right to the image of a two- or three-year-old, a toddler, seeking attention by whatever means necessary to garner such attention, giving you a hug and telling you they love you, or breaking your stuff to get attention, right? We have no problem looking upon that as, okay, that's a call for love. Of course it is. A cry for help. As adults, we're exactly the same. Either we're extending love or we're giving out a call for love. So, recognizing this, what is, in fact, the appropriate response? Love. Giving love. And when people first start this course, I can certainly, certainly relate to this experience. There's a thought that pops in that, well, I'm not really able to forgive this right now because it's just too fresh, it's just too raw, or it seems way too egregious for me. I just can't go there today. Okay. That, that's not a problem. Do we start with what's right in front of us in our own experience? There is a very famous phrase in world spirituality across traditions, really. Start where you are. In fact, it's a, a book, the title of a, a very good book, actually, by the Buddhist nun Pema Chudrun. Start where you are. This applies to the practice of true forgiveness, as well as it does to the Buddha Dharma and anything else. Start with what's right in front of you, with what you are called to forgive. The Holy Spirit knows if you're unable to go to a place of forgiving an abusive ex right now, okay, no problem. Forgive what's right in front of you. It could be as simple as a passing cloud that obscures your sunshine and irritates you. That's an opportunity for forgiveness. Our lives are full of them. And, in fact, anything that is not wholly joyous is just that. It is an opportunity for us to forgive. So, we bring the best present moment awareness that we can so we can recognize these opportunities and take them. Over time, you will find that the more consistently you do this, the more habitual it will become. And rather than condemn, your instinct, your gut reaction becomes forgiving. The world will appear very different. And if you don't believe me, that's perfectly fine. Do it and prove it to yourself. That's how we learn this course, by the way. Yes, it helps to read and study the material. Highly recommend it, of course. Understanding things on the level of the intellectual thinking mind does have importance. However, it is nothing compared to your practical experience. A Course in Miracles is genius because it is a self-study curriculum. We learn this by doing it. What happens when we really, really do it is that our experience shows us the truth of these ideas. 
it demonstrates to us that these ideas are true. If you want proof, most excellent, prove it to yourself. That's how we best learn. Viscerally, through our own experience. Can it feel kind of raw sometimes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Again, we're taking a look, an honest look at our entire experience. Not all of our entire experience is going to be a walk through a park in springtime. It's not going to be all rainbows and unicorns. Really, waking up involves taking a look, an honest look, at all of our stuff, at all of our drama, at everything that we've wrought here, looking beyond the surface level to the truth of what is, looking beyond, in other words, our brother's insane behavior to the truth of who and what he really is. Giving love. Remember, we choose what we see, love or fear. You'll recognize your choice by what you give. Whether you've chosen love or whether you've chosen fear, you will recognize your choice by what you give, by your comportment in the world, by your behavior, by your vibe by what you say and do. So my hope is that this, as with all of the videos, helps to inspire you to put these ideas into practice because it cannot possibly be stressed enough that that is how we best learn. Along the way, should you have any questions, please, please feel welcome to reach out because I do check these comments with regularity and I'm more than happy to answer a question or record standalone videos if, if that makes sense about topics that are of interest to you. Because spirituality doesn't stop while we still appear to be here running around it's ongoing. Therefore, these videos are ongoing, and several of them appear here on this channel each week. So subscribe, please, if you have not. The prompt is here in the corner of your screen. Click that icon over there. You'll be invited to join us. So please do that if you have not already, and I thank you all for tuning in, and I will talk to all of you very soon.